All right, guys. Just got back from the range. Uh, shot a variety of firearms today, and thought it was a good opportunity to do a little quick video on how to clean your handgun. Um, those of you out there that may be new to, you know, uh, owning a firearm, or maybe just want to see how someone else does it, uh, this would be a good chance for you to check it out. Uh, this is definitely not the end all, be all of how to clean a firearm. These are just some of the things I found work for me, and. Uh, We'll check them out and uh, give you guys some other options out there. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the SIG that we're going to be cleaning today. I probably put about maybe 50 to 75 rounds through this gun. I brought several guns with me today. This one kind of got shot a little bit less than some of the others. Um, so it's not going to be that dirty, but we're going to go through the process anyways. Uh, I keep all my guns very clean. I always make sure to clean them every time I use them. So with that being said... Let's talk a little bit about some of the products that we're going to need. Uh, the first thing that I like to use uh, is this gun scrubber. This gun scrubber comes in really handy. Um, if you do this step first, uh, spray out your gun with it, it makes the rest of the cleaning process much easier. All right? uh, another thing that we're going to need is some sort of foaming bore cleaner. This product is by Gunslick Pro. I like it a lot, uh, but most foaming bore cleaners work just fine. Another thing I like to use is Hops, number 9 solvent, or Hoppies, I've heard it called both, I've always called it Hops. Uh, this, they have a couple different things, so you want to make sure that you get this particular product, this uh, solvent. Uh, it's really good for cleaning, it also acts as a lubricant, but for me I use it as a cleaner. For a lubricant, uh, I specifically like this product. This is uh, Break Free CLP by Safariland, uh, an outstanding product, I've uh, been using this uh, as long as I can remember, I've never had an issue with it. Um, you know, a little goes a long way with this stuff. So with that being said, we're going to strip down the SIG real quick. Uh, when I get done with that, we're going to break into cleaning and talk a little bit about some of the stuff we're going to need. Okay, pretty simple. We got the SIG broken down now. We're going to go ahead and do the first step of cleaning this firearm. And what I like to do before I do anything else is take this foaming bore cleaner to the barrel and uh, go ahead and soak it up first. This way it has time to soak in and break down all of those uh, materials that are in there the entire time you're cleaning the rest of the gun. So we're going to put the this end in here, pull the trigger. A lot easier. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go outside uh, and use this sprayer. Uh, the reason I do it... Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is spray out this slide. Uh, you want to get in here and all the different grooves and cutouts and anywhere where you think there's a possibility of something building up, go ahead and get in there and spray. Uh, it does a pretty good job. So you'll see it comes out really hard. Get in here get these side grooves a little bit. Okay, slides ready. Okay, the other part that we're going to spray uh, is the frame of the pistol. You're just going to come in here, same concept, all those little grooves and everywhere where you're worried about stuff building up. Go ahead and get in there and spray it out really well. Okay. Once you have it sprayed out and it looks decent, again, you're going to continue cleaning uh, when we get back inside. But once you get the bulk of it taken care of with the spray, we can go in and make the rest of it a lot easier. Okay, we just got back inside from spraying out the slide in the frame on the SIG, and now we're going to move forward with uh, the rest of the cleaning process. There's a few things you're going to need. Um, there are some things that I find really handy. We're going to bust those out real quick. A lot of people use a lot of different things to help clean a gun. For me, I really like bore pads. Uh, these little pads uh, come in really handy with cleaning all the parts of the gun. So I'll put those in here. Another thing that I like a lot are Q-tips. Now I will say this, I prefer to have the Q-tips that have the wooden handle. Uh, they work a little bit better and they're also a little bit more tightly wound on the end so that you get less of these fibers in the pistol. But um, these, these work just fine, just be a little careful. This right here is a bore snake. A lot of people like to use bore snakes. Um, I, like, uh, I like it a lot for my revolver. Um, where I can't take the pistol apart as far, you know, and I need to be able to get in the bore and clean it really well. This works. But for the purposes of this firearm, we're going to use a rod. Uh, and on the end of this rod, we're going to add uh, this bristle end for cleaning out the barrel. We're going to use this plastic end at one point for these bore pads to really make sure that uh, it gets clean in there. And then this is just a finishing uh, little cloth right here that we'll use. So that's that. 
And just so you guys know, you can get really decent kits with all this kind of stuff in it. Uh, I bought mine as a kit from Cabela's. Here it is. You can see when I lift it up, it has all the different brushes and rods and everything you need to clean any caliber of firearm. So a kit like this comes in really handy, especially if you have multiple weapons of different calibers. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take Q-tips with the hops. We're going to soak the ends. And we're going to work on the slide. So you're going to see that not very much is going to come off. It's going to be pretty clean, and it's because we sprayed it out first. But you want to get down in here in all the grooves of the firearm, anywhere where there's a little pocket or somewhere where you think something could build up. We're going to get these ridges down the sides really well. Okay. Now that I've got the inside cleaned uh, how I like it, I'm going to take just a second here to get the little uh, scalloped grooves on the sides for racking the slide. Uh, stuff can tend to build up in there sometimes. There won't be much in here because of the few rounds that were put through it today. Okay, got it. Now that we've got the slide taken care of, we're going to do the same thing to the frame. The frame has a little bit less going on as far as all the little grooves and things where stuff tends to build up. Um, and that's pretty good. I think we're going to stop there um, with cleaning the frame. Okay. Now that that's done, we're going to move forward with cleaning out the barrel. So we're going to add the brush onto the end of our rod first. Just like that. We're going to go from the back end of the barrel to the front and back through. I'm going to do this probably um, seven or eight times. Okay. Now, uh, one thing I forgot to mention about this rod is it's important to have one that turns. You see this little piece right here? It swivels freely. Uh, the reason it does that is so that uh, when it goes down the barrel of the gun, it can turn along with the grooves that are already cut into the barrel. Makes things a lot easier. So I'm going to take this end piece off now, and I'm going to add the plastic one on. This plastic one has the little slit in it I was referring to for the cleaning pads. We're going to take this end of the cleaning pad and pull it through just like this. Then we're going to dip this in the hops. Okay, ring it out a little bit. Now we're going to put this through the barrel a few times, and you'll see how quickly that turned black. Now we're going to take this out. We're going to put a new one in, do the same thing. So now that we've got it to where it's pretty clean in there, I'm going to run it dry. Once we feel that it's coming out pretty clean, we're going to take off this plastic end here. There we go. And we're going to put on the uh, end that has uh, the soft fabric end. We're going to run that through a few times. It's a really tight fit in there, so it just helps to make sure that we get everything out from individual grooves and all that kind of stuff. It's going to look a little bit dirty. This is easy to rinse off and clean. And then once you get your barrel to where you think it's clean on the inside, it's important to take a flashlight and look down the barrel and make sure. Uh, so for me, uh, I've got this ProTac here, uh, my Streamline. I'm just checking it out to make sure that I don't see any visible... Uh, areas where there's a buildup. And everything looks good. So we're going to move on to the next step. Okay. Now that we have these components cleaned, uh, we have the rest of the gun. This is, this is minor. I usually, to be honest with you, just take one of the uh, ones that I used for the barrel that's still relatively clean that has some residual hops on it. And I just come through here and give it a wipe down and make sure that nothing's coming off. And it's pretty clean. There's nothing new with that. Now that we have that set up, we're going to reassemble the firearm, and in doing so, we're going to lube it up. So we have the brake-free that I was referring to by Safari Land, 
and I'm going to loop up the firearm. Get a couple of drops right there. So for the frame, I'm going to put it down uh, the grooves for the slide. A couple drops on both sides. Try to get a screenshot here. And once you go inside the frame, you really just want to look and see any wear spots. Spots where you can see uh, the color is worn away, where metal obviously rubs against metal. And you want to make sure that you get some cleaner in those spots. Like right here where it's black from the sear coat getting rubbed off. We're going to do a little extra right there. All moving parts. I'm going to do a little bit um, the, from underneath the trigger guard and the trigger housing. I'm going to put a little bit underneath uh, the dedicated hammer drop. Okay, and we're good to go. Now we're going to take the slide, same thing. Uh, no moving parts on the slide, but you can at least get those grooves anywhere where you see metal rubs. Right here we see that it's not the same color. Obviously metal tends to rub right there. I want to get that. Okay, any part where there is contact as well. So we're going to put a little bit right here. Okay, now since we have this gun ready to go, we're going to go ahead and lube it up. I mean, excuse me, we're going to go ahead and put it back together. Okay. Now that we have the gun put back together, we're going to take a little bit of the lube and hit some of these areas up front where we see that there's wear on the barrel where obviously it rubs against the slide right here. And every gun will have different spots like this, so you'll have to kind of babysit. So now we're going to move the slide forward. We're going to put a little bit on top right here where the slide moves over the barrel just to make sure that it's well lubricated. Okay, so we're going to rack the slide 10 or 15 times. Once we feel that everything's lubed up and everything's cleaned, cleaning the outside of the gun is really easy because at this point there is so much residual cleaner on the firearm that you can just take a rag and wipe down the exterior of the weapon. All right, so there you go. Sig's all cleaned up, ready to go, lubricated, uh, ready for the next trip to the range. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to show you guys is my setup for cleaning the firearms. Uh, it's just the way I keep track of everything just makes it a lot easier. And those of you that kind of have a drawer full of random stuff rolling around like I used to, uh, this helped me a lot. First, uh, we saw the kit that I got from Bill's that had all the dowels and rods and stuff. And these kits come uh, for a decent price, all the components you need. So I'd highly recommend going this route instead of having different pieces all over the place. The other thing that I would talk about doing is getting your hands on a cheap plastic uh, toolbox. This helps me keep all the stuff specifically for gun cleaning organized. So anytime I come back from the range, I got tons of guns to clean. All I do is grab this box and I grab that kit with the rods and I'm ready to go. Inside of here, this top area, uh, I have my cleaning pads. This is an Allen wrench, a specific size for one of the firearms I use. Uh, this right here is a uh, is the bore snake I was showing you that I use for the revolver. And here are some those Q-tips I was referring to. Inside of here on this first level, I have the hops, the lubricant, the cleaning picks, the plastic ones. Uh, you didn't see me use these on this firearm, but these come in really handy. What these are are plastic cleaning picks to help get down into the grooves of certain areas. Uh, I didn't use them on that on the SIG uh, just because the, the SIG is very simplistic in design, doesn't have a lot of parts. Uh, also, I didn't put very many rounds through it, so I'm fairly confident that none of this would have been necessary anyways. But they come in really handy. They're plastic. They get down into places. You don't have to worry about scratching on the surface of your gun. The other thing I do is keep a, uh, you know, like a shop towel kind of scenario, some sort of rag, I don't mind getting dirty, I can use to wipe up with, okay? In here I have the uh, little foam padded gun rug, kind of, or not rug, excuse me, gun pad that I had out underneath during the cleaning portion of the video. Uh, pack of the pads, because I go through a lot of those. The cleaner and the spray. So this just is a good way to keep everything nice, compact, and tight, uh, and out of the way, so that when it's time to clean the guns, all your stuff is there. You don't have to worry about uh, looking for everything, finding everything. It just makes it a lot easier. So uh, get your kit organized. Helps out a lot. Uh, some of the products I showed you are my favorites. I feel they work really well. So 
leave comments and uh, talk. let me know what kind of stuff you use in case there's something out there I don't know about that helps a lot.